in the beginning of this uh, course, um, it was a little difficult because the Lord uh, wanted me to uh, challenge those who were in the class. Uh, and uh, so it wasn't really a, a real uh, amiable type of class to sit and watch. Uh, in fact, I think it was probably difficult and, you know, some of you still did it, but um, uh, there were some main things that we tried to cover, that we tried to do. And uh, one of them was that we finally got to a place <clears throat> where I could explain that, uh, of course, this, this is obvious and, and has been said somewhat, that Peter's writings are very different from Paul. Uh, that Paul is very linear in his writing where he makes a statement <clears throat> and he progresses. And um, Paul, uh, Peter, Paul is that way, and Peter tends to <clears throat> be cyclical in what uh, he shares. And that means <clears throat> that he will share it over and over and over in different ways because he's got one main theme that he's trying to get across to everybody. <clears throat> And uh, because that sounds so absurd, and uh, I had uh, everyone go through, all the students go through, and to uh, try to discover uh, the pat there was a pattern. And that, that pattern was linear, but it, was, but it would turn into a circle because Peter would share it again and again. And sometimes he would share a small portion of it. Uh, sometimes he would share the whole thing in a really big way. <clears throat> but it was it was that way. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so that was part of part of phase one, and it was, you know, it was more for each of the students, the people in the classes, to dig in and to try to to grasp. And I even had the students come up and give their explanations of different portions of the scripture, <clears throat> their what they thought that those scriptures were saying. Uh, but now we're in phase two, and in phase two, which I've mentioned several times recently, um, is where <clears throat> uh, I am, uh, one of the things that I, uh, let me say this before I say that, one of the things that I said all along was that Peter's word usage is not the same as Paul's. Paul has specific meanings for his words, but Peter has his own definitions and uses some of the same words as Paul, but he has kind of a different definition of that because he's using those words within a context of this cycle and this pattern. And um, <clears throat> so I, I had told everyone that um, if you can study First Peter by looking at his words and finding his definition of them. And you find that definition <clears throat> by looking up, well, tonight, Lord willing, we'll, we're going to get into the word revealed, but there's, there's so much more that goes along with that, um, that we would find <clears throat> that, um, that the words around that particular word would also help define the word. And uh, we will find that there's, you know, I don't want to make this too complicated, but we'll find that there's a lot of, it's actually a simpler way of doing it. You, we will find that there is a, um, an interchange that flows within these words. So that's one of the things I'm trying to do is <clears throat> now I'm picking out some of those words and I'm taking us through the scripture in First Peter where they're used, and sometimes in, in Psalms, because we found out very early on that that uh, that Peter really drew a lot of what he has from the Psalms. So, um, so tonight <clears throat> we want to talk about the word "revealed." Now, um, uh, again, not to get too complicated, but there's a lot of different words in the Greek that are used for the same word "revealed." But the main thing is, is that Paul uses it a lot. And when we talk about, or when Paul talks about Christ being revealed, <clears throat> he is talking about like in the Word of God or being revealed in us as life, 
Um, whereas when Peter talks about it, he's talking about Christ being revealed in us all right, but it's, but it's more of a manifestation of Christ where he is revealed to be living within us. And um, <clears throat> so we've been talking about that. And, um, and I'd, I'd like to get into that. But what I've done in this phase two part is that, um, as most of you know, because you've been attending, <clears throat> I t I'm trying to, in this phase, link different words together to help show that these words support the words that are around them. Okay. <clears throat> the example for tonight. The word revealed. Now, that's the one we're shooting for, but you can't fully understand that without the words that go around it. So here, we probably won't get to all of those words tonight. We might. Um, but here are the words that surround it that will help define it. And then we'll just go through the scripture and read it and go, look, look, here's a pattern. Look, here how this word is is reinforcing and helping to define that word. Here are the words. And, and basically, for those of you who were in that early part where we, we discovered the pattern, and you discovered, many of you saw the pattern in 1 John. <clears throat> uh, the pattern is there's a hope. Uh, uh, and I'm talking about now the words, though, that we're going we're gonna to add into this. The hope the end of your faith or the goal, uh, Christ revealed, and then the glory of that, of him being revealed in us. All right. So just for, in case some of you were not there, I want to go over the pattern. It's real simple. And it is a definite pattern that Peter uses over and over and over. <clears throat> okay. It starts with a hope. It starts with a hope. And that hope is for Jesus to get glory. Okay. And this is, this is Peter's desire when he's writing this. Okay. The second thing is that that hope causes a person to have, to be willing to experience suffering um, or to fellowship in the sufferings of Christ. So there's a hope for Jesus to get glory, uh, and that hope will cause us willingness to be able to go through things that normally we wouldn't particularly want to, but because we want to know the fellowship of his sufferings, um, we, uh, we will enter that. And then the third thing is, to the ho this hope, <clears throat> uh, well, the, the first, because the, there's really two hopes here, the first one is, a hope that he will get glory. The second one is a hope that we will suffer correctly, that we will have the right spirit in these sufferings, okay? And then under that three, though, well, let me just say this. And then that, so the hope is that we will suffer correctly. And the fourth part of that pattern is that it will bring forth his nature. His nature will come forth in us in a proper way. So, um, uh, the hope relates to how the suffering is handled and gives us hope for the hope. That means hope to bring him glory. We hope we'll suffer properly by Christ crucified, by the Lamb, and in so doing and being with him, that will bring him glory. So, there's two hopes. My hope is, I hope that I have the right spirit when I go through this, but my hope for having the right spirit is that he would be glorified in me and the father would be glorified by his son. Okay. So, um, uh, so I just said how the suffering is handled gives us hope. Okay. Then the way we handle suffering by Christ crucified is the hope or the assurance of the hope of the father being, uh, uh, Father glorified by his given son as a sacrifice in us. All right. So that's a lot in a certain sense, but it's really very simple. And once you once you get hold of it, it just starts opening up the book of, of uh, First Peter. And many of you have already found that to be true. All right. 
So let's start with chapter one. <clears throat> now, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to look out for these words throughout tonight in the scriptures that we read. Number one, hope. Number two, the end of your faith or or the aim or the goal or the or the thing. And it doesn't use the word aim, but the word end in this case many times is translated aim and um, what we're shooting for. None of those words are in there, but we'll see the, the words that he uses uh, revealed and then glory. So we're looking for these words because they are signifiers of this pattern but more than a pattern. We're just trying to see the pattern so that we can understand what Peter is trying to communicate to us. All right. So in uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, we're going to start with verse 5. <clears throat> All right. So before we read this, um, then we need to see that there is this process of being willing to go into the sufferings of Christ. And we've, we've seen that in previous classes by these scriptures of people uh, turning on you, people falsely accusing you, people uh, um, speaking evil of you. We've used, we've used all of that and more to show what we're talking about when we're talking about the sufferings of Christ and being with him. So. So once we enter into those sufferings, and we drew a chart on the board one time, not that long ago, that helped identify these. Once we enter into those sufferings, usually at the very beginning, we're just all over the place. Our soul is out of control, and this isn't right, and this isn't fair, and this is the, that person's the one who's really wrong, and all this kind of stuff. Our soul just, it just goes off. And it finds something wrong with everybody else. Um, but within those sufferings, Christ begins to come forth. And this is the, the verse 5 starts with who are kept by the power of God. Okay. We are kept in this by the power of God to bring forth Christ as a lamb. Not just bring forth Christ as a healer or deliverer but to bring him forth in us as a lamb whereby like jesus we you know who who being accused opened not his mouth and all of the things that uh, he suffered because he was a lamb and if he was just a god of power to destroy his enemies he would have opened his mouth. He would have used his power. He would have immediately destroyed all enemies. But instead, he went through that and it glorified God. And the cross became the symbol of, of Christianity and of the life of Christ and of the way that we're supposed to live and, and handle things. All right. So who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. <clears throat> now, we've already gone through this, and it was one of our classes, but we, we spoke of it probably several times, and that is the, that Peter doesn't talk about being saved from hell or from sin or from guilt. He talks about our soul being saved from that, that that is saved from all that reaction, all of that. Uh, uh, well, one of the things that we described was was an evildoer will say and do all these things against us, and then we just become an evildoer and we say and do the same stuff back towards them. But there is this power that can keep us, keep our soul, save our soul from. Uh, manifesting uh, that spirit of an evildoer back. Okay, so, and, and we'll see that through these, even through these scriptures. Unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Now again, Peter's definitions are all different. So he's talking about that we're being kept by the power of God unto this salvation of our souls, which is 
going to be revealed. It's going to be Christ revealed in us that is the thing that keeps us. Um, and then he uses the term in the last time. Well, we automatically relate all of these words to Paul. But we will see if we can, if you'll stick with me through this, we will see that over and over and over again, Peter uses this similarity and he's always referring it to the sufferings of Christ. He's not referring to it in any other context that, that Paul would use on a regular basis. Okay, so the last time for him is, this is the last part of the process. Once you, you enter in, I mean, it's, it's like a corridor. Um, you are here and um, you have... Uh, you are about to face these trials, and this it's like this corridor here. And you're going to enter this corridor of the suffering, the sufferings of Christ, but you're going to fellowship with Him in it. You're going to be with Him. You're not going to be like Peter did and deny the Lord. Were you one with him? No, no, I'm not. You're not, you know, you're not going to be like the Lord who's total. I mean, like Peter, who is totally ignorant of the, what the Lord's going through and sleeping in the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus has to come wake you up and tune you in. No, you're going to be with him. And you're going to know you're with him in this. And that's what your heart is. Okay, that's what your hope is that you'll once you enter this corridor okay so you enter and let's just divide it and I, I hadn't thought of a chart or anything like this but let's just say the first half you begin to get into it and there can be reactions of your soul in here your soul begins to react because maybe initially you don't really see it as the sufferings of Christ you see it as just the devil or you see it as, you know, and this is, this is what, what Paul was, uh, Peter was referring to later. Uh, you know, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to test you. He's testing you if you're going to be with the Lord. But we're jumping ahead on that. But nonetheless, that's what's going on. Okay, so he, so there can be these reactions for many, many reasons. One is we have to get our bearings. The other one is, you know, someone that we trusted uh, has turned on us and saying all this bad stuff about us and it throws us for a loop for a little bit or whatever. Um, um, but we, we do understand going in once this starts happening, God, I need to be saved from my soul. My soul is what, you know, and we, for those of you who have been with us through the process, man, we went through so many scriptures uh, particularly out of the Psalms that show that David's prayer was constantly not save me from my enemies, but save me from my soul. And, and we went through a lot of scriptures and it literally said that. Okay, so then that the recognition begins to come. Okay, so if you can say then there's a transition time when in that you begin to desire uh, the hope, and that is, my hope is the Lord will be glorified in this. And my hope is that I, my soul, will not control me all the way through this process. And my hope is that, um, uh, that I can, I will be with the Lord so that He can come forth and be revealed, be manifested in me in that nature of the Lamb in the process. Okay, so that's. That, so when he gets in here, he's transitioning uh, uh, from the soul. And he gets over into this side. And this is where Christ is going to be revealed or manifested. It really, uh, where he's revealed in us as the Lamb of God. And we're with him. You know, it'd be like hanging hanging next to Jesus, but in this sense, he's in us. He's the one doing this. So this is, so the, the goal is that he'll be revealed in us in this spirit. And this will bring glory 
to God the Father. Glory to God the Father. And I'm sure I'm standing in front of the other cameras and stuff. and I can't. But anyway, so there's a threefold process that's going on here. And with all that chalk dust, I can have to take a drink. All right. So who are kept, we need to be kept by the power of God uh, unto salvation, the salvation of our souls, ready to be revealed at the last time. Okay, because this this is the end of the process. This is the the goal. This is the um, down here. Uh, the the revealing of Him is really ultimately what what we want, what Jesus wants, and what the Father wants. All right. So verse six, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season. If need be, you are in heaviness, and the word heaviness is depression, <laughs> through manifold temptations. That's part one up here. There it is. If need be, if you need to go into that, now, now I have to say, you don't always have to go through that. You can actually grow in, in the relationship with the Lord and the Lamb and un start understanding Him more and more. You can actually see this stuff coming or... So if, if it starts happening, you go, oh, I know what this is. And I'm going to be with the Lord in this, see. And it's not just general sufferings. It's not every situation. It's specific to the sufferings of Christ. And that's the purpose for this class. But more importantly, that was the purpose God had Peter write the book of First Peter. All right. So, though if need be... You go through these these trials here. You have to necessarily because now this can be this can be two things. Um, let me use a different colored deal. The the trials here can be the external trials of of an evil doer who is speaking evil of you, and it but it can also include the turmoil going on on the inside of us in our soul. Two things. They can come from two, and, and sometimes it's both of those. Um, but it's usually always an evildoer. It's always someone who, or some ones who have, you know, the, 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 either the Lord is allowed or the devil is stirred up to attack or to, you know. So, um, so uh, though now for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness through manifold temptations, many temptations, that the trial of your faith. Okay, the faith, we've, we've talked about faith, but the faith um, is that will we stand and be with the Lamb in His nature? Will we allow Him to override us in this situation though we're in these things right here it is a trial of our faith and so you know we say well no it's it's the devil no it's in that sense this is of god this is and we talked about that in one of the other classes um so um that the trial of your faith being much more precious than that of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire. So here's the, here's the fire as you're going through it. Here's the fire coming from the evildoer. Um, though it be tried with fire, may be found unto praise and, and honor and glory. Down here, the glory is when he Christ is revealed as the Lamb in us. That's where God gets the glory. That's where Jesus is glorified. And that's where we are, we are glorified in the sense that we brought forth Christ in this way. We were not just uh, asking like Israel for deliverance from the, the um, uh, Egyptians, just deliver us, but like the firstborn who ate the Lamb and wanted to be the Lamb, or at least certainly was called to be that. Um, but, but not just found the praise and honor and glory at the appearing 
of Christ. And here he's revealed. Here he's appearing in us at this latter stage, at the end, at the last time. He has, uh, you know, I mean, I hadn't thought about this, but in a sense, this is sort of just a, a, a little example of what people call Armageddon or the, or the last days and whatever. And you go through all this stuff and you're tested and tried and the devil's running loose and all this stuff. Um, it certainly matches with the book of Revelation. <clears throat> but, but Peter isn't, he, he's not into eschatology. <laughs> he's into Christ crucified. And he wants, he wants us, he knows that he failed. And it hurt him deeply. He wept bitterly. Um, but once he understood, he came back strong. And so those, this is where that book come from, came from. All right. So, though manifold trials, it's trying your faith. And though you're tried with fire, it might ultimately be found unto praise and honor at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Okay, so then it says, Whom having not seen ye love, well, you know, I, to be honest with you, I'm going to leave that one with you, but it could easily mean who in this situation, in this phase right here, I haven't seen him yet. All I've seen is me. But, but I'm not saying go with that explanation. Because we could say, well, this is talking about who haven't seen Jesus come back in the sky yet or met him that way. Um, I, won't, I won't argue with anybody. I believe it can be, uh, personally, I believe it can be both. I've always believed this from early in my walk. The Lord showed me that things are in threes. Uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, spirit, soul, and body, um, you know, husband, wife, children, uh, that that God moves in threes, and one is uh, the uh, physical. Well, let's let's just go spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay, so spirit would be uh, if you want to put that in the category of Jesus coming back in the air. That's fine. Uh, in the soul is where Christ is manifested in us. In the body is. Um, well, actually, that's the one where Jesus would be coming back in the air for our bodies and take us up. That's the way people see that. But Paul, I mean, Peter really is not, you know, I can't explain every word, but he is not trying to teach us to just be ready for the end times. He's got a greater message. His message is, be with Christ now in the trials and show forth his nature. Now, again, remember, this is still early on in phase two. Don't believe anything that I say. Let's just keep hacking away at the scriptures and see if it doesn't continually, you know, even with better clarity than this, say the same thing and sort of quantify what his meaning is when he gets down to here. Better, with more clarity. All right. So, because this is just the first chapter and first couple of verses so far. All right. Um, uh, verse 9, receiving the end of your faith. There it is. Receiving the end of your faith. You see that? that you want, that's what your desire is is the end of your faith is the appearing of Christ in you as lamb. Okay? Um, <clears throat> even the salvation of your souls. Not, the, not, you know, we talked about this. I really hate having to circle back around because I don't know how many people have been in all the different parts. But, but Peter continually talks about the salvation of our souls in the process that we go through here to keep us from becoming an evil doer by going with our soul. <clears throat> All right. Um, which salvation? See, and he's talking about the salvation of our souls. Which salvation? See, he's not talking about um, that we're all going to be saved and go to heaven. 
He's talking about the salvation of our souls, though we go through manifold trials and, and are, you know, down about it over here in, phase, in the first part of this thing. Um, the prophets inquired, uh, searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto us, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. The sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. And he's, the, he's saying the prophets saw this. Peter is saying the prophets understood this. They didn't just see it as Jesus is going to come and die and then he's going to rise again and then he's going to come to us and say, y'all don't have to go through anything with me or anything like that. I'm just going to save you all. No. Peter said, I was with Jesus. I was, I saw, he says this in chapter 5, I saw the sufferings of Christ, what he went through. And you know, and he said, but, I, but now I've become a partaker of that. Okay, so. Um, searching what manner of time the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Okay, so they're looking for this time period. Not just what Jesus went through, but for this time period this specific kind of suffering, this specific kind of situation. And he's talking about there's an eternal glory, and he'll use those words later on, an eternal glory found in being with the Lord in this stuff, in this area. Okay. So, um, and of course, there's and the glory that should follow. There's always this thing of, the end, the last time, what follows all of this right here. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them, that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look unto. Wherefore, wherefore, See, not, not wherefore, let's just rejoice that Jesus died and the Holy Spirit was sent and the gospel is preached. Wherefore, this is verse 13, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that shall be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ, of him being manifested through us by his nature. Okay, so, man, in truth, I really haven't even gone through this. I was just trying to read through the scriptures. Okay, so let's just consider this then. In this process, in this process of entering and becoming partakers of the suffering of Christ, there is something that must be revealed within it. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. There's something that must be revealed. In the midst of the railing accusations, lies, and venom, Christ must appear in you, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness through manifold trials, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, may be found unto praise, honor, and glory at the appearing Christ must appear, okay? <clears throat> to get past your trials and into his nature is the end or aim for which you seek. You enter it in hope that it should come or in a glory that should follow. In a glory that should follow. Searching 
what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow unto whom it was revealed. Okay. And then I wrote, even the prophets understood that with the sufferings of Christ, there is a glory that should follow and be revealed. If, if this is just God delivering you from some, something you're suffering, it has nothing to do with his sufferings, uh, there's not necessarily a glory to be revealed except that you got out of it. <sighs> Praise God, I got out of it. This spirit in this thing that Peter continually presents to us really has nothing to do with getting out of it. Um, but it really has mainly to do with the sufferings of Christ. In other words, there may be things that you get deliverance from. But when it comes to the sufferings of Christ, God wants you to be with His Son in His Spirit and to pass through this with the nature of the Lord and bring glory, eternal glory, to God the Father and to the Son, and to the Father by Jesus Christ. So, they incur the, the prophets encourage us to hope to the end for the grace that should come when He is revealed in your sufferings. Wherefore, guard up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of, of Jesus Christ. This revelation of the Lamb is manifested in you, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, this verse 20 now, but was manifest in these last times for you, so that, so that He could come forth in you, who by Him do believe in God, that raised Him up from the dead, and gave Him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Um, all right, so um, so I'm going to stop because um, we want to see examples of this, not just in chapter 1. We want to see examples that are more clear in chapter 2 and chapter 3 and chapter 4 and chapter 5, so that if we can sit through the rough part, which might be this, this class, if we can sit through that um, and go, oh, okay, kind of, well, I don't think that's what it's saying. When we go through the rest of it, if it proclaims it loudly and clearly without any questions, that's what it's saying. And it does it from chapter to chapter. Then, then, you can say, that must be what he's saying, because that's what's written. He keeps saying that over and over. So that's my goal. My goal isn't for you to, uh, to believe me, or to believe my, what, what you might consider my view of First Peter. I know better, but I, I only know that not by high-mindedness. I know that by the Spirit of God who took months of deep searching to say, I, need, I want to see your true heart here, Lord. What are you saying through your servant? And, and it's, to me, it's, it is eternal value. It is, it is worth us taking the time and going through this. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much, <clears throat> Father, that your spirit wants to bring us more and more into this. And as we gather in the early gleanings of the first chapter, may you, by your Spirit, make it beyond gleanings as we move forward. May your Spirit breathe the life of the, of the blessing that we could be with Christ in His sufferings, that we could literally truly fellowship in his sufferings and it not be trying to get him to fellowship in the stuff we're going through. So 
So, Father, keep us moving forward. Let every, every time together be seeds that may not come up tonight, but will come up in due season like all seeds do. And they will bring forth also in due season like all things do. And that we may rest, rest in your, in your rest. We may rest in your heart in your word, in your view of how you have had Peter present this to us. So we thank you. We love you. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. I might say, go, go ahead and be, you know, go ahead and look at the rest of the chapters. Go ahead and dig in a little bit. Find it for yourself. Don't wait for me to, to show it to you. Um, love you guys. Thank you for your hunger and your hearts. Amen.